What's going on, YouTube land? It's your boy Drizo, and I'm back with another video for you guys. It's your first time viewing the channel. I am your favorite black powder carrying, super offensive criminal who is so dangerous to the government that all I'm allowed to carry is a 44. Anyway, guys, I've got a really good one for you today. This is going to be debunking gun banners, false constitutional carry claims. This is an article written by Lee Williams. This is a pretty good one. It's basically going over um, all these gun groups are trying to, I mean, every single one of them is just rushing to get to Tallahassee to try to make sure that they don't become the 26th state to go permitless carry. Keep in mind, you guys, um, there's a rumor about different states and whether or not they're constitutional carry or they're permitless carry. <clears throat> One state, Kansas, is considered, I guess, constitutional carry. I'm not even really sure if they still require a permit. But like everybody else, like in Texas, we're a permitless carry state. We're not actually constitutional. Constitutional carry state would mean that the Second Amendment is my permit, which means anybody can carry it. So technically nobody's constitutional carry. So let that be a reminder to you guys that even though these places are going for this stuff, it's a push in the right direction, but until we get everybody their God-given rights to where they can run around, walk around, mind their own business, go about their day-to-day -day life without having to be worried about arrested for simply carrying something, not committing a crime, we have uh, not done our due diligence and fully will never have constitutional carry until that day. So, Nearly every anti-gun group in the country has descended upon Tallahassee to try to stop Florida from becoming the 26th state to allow residents and visitors to carry concealed firearms without a permission slip from the government. It is an important mission <clears throat> for the gun ban industry because once Governor Ron DeSantis signs the bill, and he will, assuming, keep in mind you, because he hasn't necessarily pushed for it, the majority of states will allow unlicensed or permitless carry. For program advocates, this would be a significant victory in the war to restore our Second Amendment rights, and the other team will do anything they can to prevent this from happening. Once again, I went over this in my ride home with Drizo. We have a morality thing. We have those who are for a strict conservative moral country and those that are like, just do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting someone, right? It's important to point out that neither Florida's HB 543 nor its companion bill, SB 150, are traditional constitutional carry bills. Since neither bill legalizes the open carry of arms, true constitutional carry allows gun owners to decide for themselves whether to carry arms openly or concealed. Um, I believe if you're carrying like a seven and a half inch revolver and you want to open carry it, go for it. But me personally, I don't really care if anybody knows. Actually, I should say it like this. I prefer someone not to know I have a gun. Let's just put it that way. Um, I All day long, in my day-to-day -day life, I have one on me. There's not ever a time where I don't have one on me when I leave this house. Nobody is none the wiser unless they are my personal friend or someone I'm you know, in conversation with, basically. But for the most part, um, no one ever knows that I have a gun, and I believe it should be that way. So, <clears throat> true constitutional carry. We already went over that. Um, open carry was not included in either bill. We still have not been told why, or at least not officially, which is funny because Florida has this really weird um, law. Um, you can't carry a shotgun or a rifle openly unless you are hunting or fishing. Uh, if, you were, if you were on the way to or from hunting or fishing or doing those things, you can have a, a rifle or shotgun open carried. Um, so people just go, yeah, I'm going down there to fish. I mean, it's the stupidest law ever, but I mean, nonetheless, it is a law. <clears throat> In what has been called smart bundling, SB 150 also includes numerous school safety provisions, such as expanding Florida's school guardian program, which if you guys don't know, Texas did this as well, teaching uh, and training teachers, coaches, principals, admin to uh, carry a firearm at school, which to be honest with you, it is a push in the right direction, but we're still showing, okay, you can have your second amendment in a place where other people aren't allowed to, but you have to get training for it. You see how that's still kind of not a really a good thing, but at least it's a move to protect our kids. By the way, don't keep your kids in public schools. They're a waste of time and they will indoctrinate your kids and groom them. And they will either decide that they are a woman in a boy's body or they have 48 genders and you're stupid if you think that there's only two. So 
funny, funny story. Side note real quick about that. I had a conversation at the dinner table with my kids and uh, my wife, and this is going to upset some people. Okay. I have no problem going back to how things were um, able to vote. And, and this may upset some people, but this is my opinion. Um, a Christian male is allowed to vote. You did that. Guess what? All these problems would be gone because none of these crap holes would be ever in any kind of official capacity. Um, some people may disagree with, <clears throat> oh, women should be able to vote. And you know what? I don't think they should. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, if you're not willing to sign up for a draft and go to war, uh, you shouldn't be able to vote. And even before that, if you didn't own land as a man, you weren't allowed to vote either. So... Yeah, if you're just renting an apartment and you're 48 years old and do nothing with your life, you know, I don't think you should vote. Now, if you're in your older age and, and family, you know, family's been lost and, <clears throat> you know, your ancestors, you know, or not ancestors, I'm sorry, your kids and kids' kids aren't really helping you, that's kind of screwed up, you know. Things happen. People get on disabilities, people, all that kind of stuff happens. But the majority of people that are 48 years old, 50 years old, that live in an apartment, by themselves or with a roommate, they have no, they have nothing to do with providing to society. They are living to live. They probably smoke weed. They drink, uh, heavily. Uh, they live for the weekend. They, they do a bare minimum job and they don't really care. Um, again, there are outliers in that, you know, you could have someone that just doesn't want to take care of a house and wants everything to be paid for by the people they rent it from. And so be it. But we cannot go on fringe minorities to make decisions. We have to go on a population basis for all. Again, this country is found on Christianity. Like it or not, if you're a Christian, or if you're not a Christian, you know, okay. I'm not going to force my crap. I'm not crap. I'm not going to force my way of life on you. I'm not going to demand that you do it. But because our documents said that it can only work for a religious group, um, you probably shouldn't have a say in government because it doesn't work for you. Our, our system doesn't work. If you don't have a God that gives you these rights, your only other gov your only other God is government. And we see how well that's turning out. They're stealing the elections. They're telling you to wear a Chinese face diaper to protect you. And now it's coming out because I can say it on YouTube now. They don't work. Oh, and, and the, the jabs didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, they killed people. I'm glad I can say that now. Fuck you, YouTube. Anyway, back to this. <clears throat> Regardless of what the bill is called or... It's other offerings. They thought of restoring more gun rights, especially in Florida, has brought the gun banners out in droves. We've seen members of every town demanding moms, demanding students, uh, Giffords, Brady, and Florida's extremely anti-gun league of women voters all shuffle to the mic. Their testimonies before the House and the Senate committee have been interesting, despite uh, desperate and at times comical. If the gun banners sent their A-team to the Tallahassee and that is the best they can do, Freedom will most certainly prevail, and I agree with that. It's clear that gun banners move are, moves are well organized and orchestrated. Too many of their objectives seemingly cut for the same playbook. Keep in mind, anti-gunners have phones, Skype, Zoom too. They're sharing information and ideas. Florida has become their latest battle template. They are throwing a lot of crap against the wall. That which strikes likely will be used in the next state they attempt to victimize. <clears throat> Here are some of the lowlights of their testimony. Guys, this is going to be funny. This is why I'm kind of in a comical mood, but I'm also speaking a lot of truth here. Um, this stuff will make you laugh. Untrained carry is what the anti-gunners are calling this. Currently, unless the gun owner has a DD-214, they must provide proof of training before qualifying for Florida Concealed Weapons or uh, Firearm License or a CWFL. One of the byproducts of HB 543 and SB 150 is an end to training requirements because the CWFL will no longer need to be carried for a concealed firearm. As you can imagine, more than a few rabid demanders railed against untrained carry, even though nothing could be farther from the truth. <coughs> Their tactic was unwittingly bolstered by um, penniless county sheriff, I'm saying that wrong, uh, Bob Guterri, who serves as the legislative chair of the powerful Florida States Association, Florida Sheriff's Estates Association. Uh, 
that guy testified about how poor some of the mandatory this mandatory training has become. He described several firearm instructors who only required students to shoot one round into a water barrel before issuing the certificate needed to obtain their CWFL. <clears throat> I'm going to say this, okay? I love my wife. I love my family. I my wife is one of the most smart and intelligent people in the world. She is my best friend. Uh, she is an amazing woman. She is an amazing mother. Uh, she is an amazing household provider, um, which means that she provides the home. She she makes this house a home. My wife is also a very good shot, but her CHL class was like three hours of online watching and just answering the legality paperwork crap. She went to a gun range with an instructor for like an hour before the gun range opened. And he just told her to shoot when to shoot and whatever. I saw now she's a great shot. Don't get me wrong. She's a great shot. And she carries it, you know, she carries a compact, but, um, most people could pass this test, um, with no training whatsoever and just minimal understandings of how to operate a firearm. These train, the, the training provided that you have to go get um, in these other states for this kind of stuff is stupid and obscure. I just told you, shoot a hole in a water bottle. And okay, as long as you do that, all right, here's your certificate. You know why? Because these instructors know this is dumb. This is your second amendment right. I don't need, you don't need to go get proof of training in order to go take your training certification <laughs> to then carry a gun. You want to talk about actual training? I looked it up, okay? I looked it up. There is a place uh, in Texas uh, about 45 minutes north of me, an hour north of me, uh, in a place called McKinney, Texas. They have a brand new shooting indoor range, if you want to call it that. Their big thing, though, is that they train, and they do sufficient training. First class, $2,000. $2,000. I don't know about you guys, but... Um, I don't just have two. I mean, I do, but never mind. That's not the point. The point is, is for the average person, including myself, okay, keep in mind you, to go drop $2,000 and by the way, give up three days, okay, where you don't have to be at work and we know how great our economy is as it is and we know how great our employers have been in America with giving us so much time off, um, that is a very, very hard thing to do. And that is a lot of money. And then you have to bring your own ammo and this per this particular class I looked up, which is by the way, is the entry level, okay? Entry level for beginners, you have to have a semi-auto or a revolver. And then if you have a revolver, you have to bring speed loaders, you have to bring three of them and you have to bring 150 rounds. Magazines, you have to bring three magazines, okay? So if you go buy a Taurus G3C, that comes with three magazines, right? But if you go buy a Taurus G2C, that's two magazines. Second magazine is going to run you 30 bucks. 150 rounds. If you buy some cheap ammo, and keep in mind you, I'm just talking nine millimeter, you may be looking at like, I don't know, maybe $75, $80. God forbid you want to run a 45 or a 380, which is less than nine millimeter, yet somehow more expensive, or a 38 special, even more expensive. So this stuff adds up very quickly. And that's just to go do training on your own in Texas. And we have permitless carry. You don't have to be trained. Training doesn't do anything for the common person unless they are able to do it at their own pace and their own time with money that they have. You can go buy, <clears throat> you know, I don't know, a staccato, right? 23, 24, $2,500, 2011, nine millimeter. Okay, you can go buy that. I can't. Uh, you know, the problem that we have is is the ability to to you know satisfy the needs of quote unquote the left, which by the way will never ever be satisfied. They'll never be happy. But there's some people on the right that go, yeah, yeah, we should have training. Make it affordable. There's a YouTube channel, Classic Firearms, right? They did a training thing where the main guy went and trained with like top of the line person and all this stuff. And it was a three day training course and they shot, you know, around corners through holes. Uh, they did run drills, they did build drills, you know, they did all kinds of stuff, Mozambique drills. I mean, they did everything, right? Full in-depth 
teaching you how to shoot, how to, how to come from here to point, like everything. They teach you how to run, how to sidestep, how not to cross your feet. I mean, a really in-depth class for what I would say would be advanced to above advanced people, right? I just, for some reason, decided to look up this guy. $10,000 for a three-day course and you bring all your own ammo. By the way, 1,000 rounds of ammo you're required to bring to this course. Okay, 1,000 rounds right now, probably for super cheap stuff. Okay, no, not super cheap, but cheap stuff. You're probably looking at like 350, 400 bucks. Uh, and that's ordering offline, right? So these people that we, we need to appease for this kind of stuff, if you want proper training, make it affordable for everyone to do. I can't afford that stuff. What do I do with mine? <coughs> Mostly because I won't be able to go to any of these training classes because I'm not allowed to have a gun, but yet I can carry guns. It's stupid. Anyway, I go to the range. I train. I learn how to shoot. I learn how to shoot accurately. One shot from a 22, well placed, will do a lot better than a 12 round mag, mag dump from a 9mm. One well shot placed bullet is going to do more damage than a mag dump from a nine millimeter handgun. Why? Accuracy. Get accurate, get good under pressure, get good at raising your blood pressure, get good at knowing when your blood pressure is raised and how to think and focus. There's all kinds of things that you can do at home. Uh, get your heart racing, go on a walk, go on a run, go on doing something, right? And then come back and do math. I know that sounds really stupid and kind of weird, but do math and see how fast you can do the math and focus on the numbers. It helps you to retain um, uh, situational awareness when your heart rate's up, right? That doesn't cost any money. To be able to appease these people, it has to be aff affordable. I can go buy... With $600, I can go get a Taurus G2C and 1,000 rounds of ammo. I've got two mags, 1,000 rounds of ammo. 600 bucks, right? That's going to put most people out of everything they're going to want to spend, right? Most people do not get the luxury of going and buying a $1,000 you know, $1, handgun, uh, a $2,000 AR, right? People have to budget, right? I mean, I have, I have plenty of stuff here. I'm very blessed. I'm very fortunate. Um, but I'm still considered the average person. And when I go to buy another, you know, black powder, um, gun, I'm going to look it over my wife and go, Hey, this is what it's going to cost. Um, is there anything that we need before we have, before I can just go ahead and move forward and buy this I have the money for it right now, but I'm not buying it because, you know, we just bought a car. We just bought all this stuff. Basically I'm getting in a tangent about finances and budget and how we're the average American. We have a budget. We have inflation through the roof, which, by the way, is completely Joe Biden and the Democrats' fault. Uh, Donald Trump had nothing to do with that, just so you know. Uh, worst economy we've seen since the last Republican named Jimmy Carter. But nevertheless, we have, we have our day-to-day -day lives to go through. We have children to feed. We have bills to pay. We have gas to put in our cars. Um, we have insurance to pay for. We have all different kinds of things that we have to do in our day-to-day -day lives where we can't just go, cool, let's go drop two grand on some ammunition and guns. Now, do I believe you should prep? Do I believe you should work it into your budget as far as guns and ammo go? Yes, they're an essential item, and they are going to be a very essential thing if Joe Biden and Kamala lays on her back Harris keep taking the country the way it is. Keep in mind, you guys, we still have another year, two years almost. It's scary. Yeah, it's scary. Anyway, let me get on with the rest of this stuff, but yeah. No one wants the bill. Okay, most of the pro-gun advocates who testified at the House and Senate hearings said they supported the bill, but they wanted it amended to include open carry. One demanding mom seized upon this. Apparently, no one's for this bill today, she said. Several Democrats on this committee echoed her comments and called for the bill to be withdrawn. It should be noted that the NRA, GOA, NAGR, and Florida Carry, Inc. have all voiced support for the legislation. Sure, it is a uh, hope that it will be amended to include open carry, but it is still the most significant restoration of our gun rights since 1987. This was ignored by the legacy media who covered the hearings. Ironically enough, the media not telling you what things are doing. Even the NRA, you know, those old men who don't care about anything but their automatic machine guns and suppressors and they don't care about your rights. Even the NRA said, yeah, let's do this. But um, the big thing is I do have some people in Florida that are 
um, living there who are like me, prohibited, right? You can open carry a black powder revolver legally. If this bill goes through, you're allowed to conceal. Um, that will be a huge, huge uh, victory for us as prohibited people because now you can get a, you know, 1858 paid ass. You can get, you know, my 1860, um, 1860, uh, 44 Colt, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, you can get these and you can conceal carry them now. You don't have to carry a big old, you know, revolver or a short one with a short holster on the outside anymore. Now you can just go about your day-to-day -day life and conceal this. My ultimate thing and takeaway from this one, guys, is these gun grabbers are coming for everything and anything they can. Um, they're yelling and they're harping and grabbing any little piece they can from people like this person right here. Well, I like the bill, but I want to include open carry. What's the first thing they say? See, nobody else wants this bill either. See how that works? Um, they parrot things. Uh, we have to be careful about the things we say, uh, but in reality, we don't because we can just back them up and go, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I'm sorry you misunderstood me. I'm sorry you didn't hear that correctly. See, our side is willing to apologize. Our side is willing to admit we make mistakes. Their side can't do it. That is one of the things that will help us win in the end. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. A little bit of a lengthy one, nevertheless. Guys, I am demonetized on YouTube right now. I still have about a month, 25 days, until I can reapply. I am still selling Drizo Nation t-shirts. They are $30. That includes shipping. I will leave my email link down below. Email me. I will get the payment set up. I will get your address and I'll get it shipped right out to you guys. Thank you so much for your continued support. Give this a thumbs up. Give it a like. Share it with somebody. I look forward to comment, uh, talking to you guys in the comments. And as always, I love you. Take care. And I'll see you in the next one.